I didn't have no tail. Whose report will you believe? We'll re believe the report of Yahweh. We were fearfully and wonderfully made to healing one thing. That doesn't include a tail. The inheritance and the right to determine inheritance. Now, so Yeshua hands Kepha the keys, Shimon Kepha, and says, Look, Kepha, these are the keys of the Malchut Hashemayim. Now, Chris, I don't want you to miss this, okay? These are the keys of the Malchut Hashemayim. Now, listen carefully, because you're only going to get this in the Restoration Scriptures yeah. True Name Edition. Whatever you bind on earth shall be. You with me, Rifta? I can't hear you. Yes. That's better. Whatever you bind on earth shall be. Having been bound previously in the Shammai, whatever you loose on the earth shall be. Having been previously loose. In the Shammai. Now, can we talk? Oh, yeah. When I first got saved, oh. I used to sit in a Pillars of Faith tabernacle uh -oh. in Flushing. Yeah. And we used to sit in the basement uh, every Tuesday night, Wednesday night. And we would just have a demon party. We'd well, be a demon party. We'd give more glory to the demoniacs than to Yahweh. I bind the spirit of abortion. We bind the spirit of nicotine. We bind the spirit of the of video camera. We bind that sweet, that sweet spirit that, that causes people to be fat. We bind sugar. We bind the spirit of sugar. We bind the spirit of molasses. We bind the holy cows in India. We and then we lose. Glory! Oh, glory! Hallelujah! We lose the Holy Ghost into every classroom. And we lose the Holy Ghost into every mechanic shop. <laughs> and we lose the Holy Ghost into, in, in, into every abortion clinic. We lose the Holy Ghost. And I was part of that. I was part of that. And here I am, I'm sending, I'm sorry, on one hand, I'm binding demons that don't even exist. Demons of sugar and molasses. <laughs> on the other hand, I'm loosing a ghost, and we know there's no such thing as a ghost that's holy. And I'm loosing, I'm playing Yahweh. In other words, I'm sending the Holy Spirit, only Yahweh can send the Holy Spirit, but in the basement of that church, here I was, Marshall Konachowski, sending the ghost. <laughs> Uh, is, can I ask you a question? Is there anything wrong with this theology? Since when was the last time now we asked you where to send the ghost? He sends the Ruach HaKodesh. That's right. The way he wants to. Without human permission and intervention. And because we believe Matthew 16, 19 spoke about some authority to sit in the basement and lose the ghost Bind demons, brothers and sisters, listen. This has absolutely nothing to do with binding demons. In, right. in a Hebraic understanding, when something was bound, we forbid that in our life. When something was loosed, we permitted that in our life. That's all it means. It doesn't mean that you have to look for the demon in the cupboard and bind him so that the insects can go away. Because until you bind the demon in the cupboard, the insects are going to keep coming into the crumbs. No, it just means allowing. Just uh, Parents, when you bind your children to their room, you disallow any freedom, right? Amen. When you loose them to go out and play, what are you doing? You're permitting them or allowing them to go. That's all it means. This was a rabbi. This was not a Swahili. This was not a performer in a three-ring circus. He was a rabbi. He knew what binding and loosing meant. Every rabbi knew what binding and loosing meant. Now, do I take authority over demons? Absolutely. But this is how I deal with demons. You foul demon, I bind you in Yeshua's name. I, can't, I take authority over you in Yeshua's name. Adios. End of story.
There's no talking to the devil, negotiating, telling the devil your life story. You messed with my mama. You messed with my grandmama. You messed with my kid. Satan, it's been a long struggle, but I bind you. And, and so for 20 minutes talking to the demon and Yahweh, you talk to Yahweh for 30 seconds. Now you tell me that's of Yahweh. It's of the church. That's for sure. Baruch Hashem So, but notice the way this reads in verse 19. Matthew 16, 19. If, now don't, please don't miss this, because you're going to hug me later if you get this. If heaven has loosed a practice, it is loose. No prayer necessary. No prayer meetings necessary. If heaven has loosed a practice, it's loosed. All we are to do is exercise the authority and enforce it. If heaven has bound a practice, it is what? It is bound. So what Yeshua is saying, I'm not going to be with you guys. I'm going back to the Father. While I was on earth, I was binding and loosing Torah. But now I'm back. I'm going to be like going back to the Father. Look. Look at Yeshua's words in verse 19. Whatever you shall bind, Peter, having been bound in heaven, will be bound. Whatever you lose, having been bound, meaning if it's not bound by heaven, you can't bind it. If it's not loosed in heaven, you can't loose it. If heaven looses it and the state binds it, like plural marriage, you can't be bound. If the heavens loose it, like women can minister in Israel. Heaven has loosed it. Peter, you loose it. Because it's already been loosed in the heavens. That's what it means. It has nothing to do with demons. Zero. Now think why the Restoration Scriptures is so crucial in understanding this verse. Think about that. Because what Yahweh is saying is, is this. If the heavens have allowed it, on earth, no man can disallow. Oh. Peter, you allow what I've allowed in heaven. If I've disallowed it in heaven, Peter, you in my place disallow it on earth. And how do we know what Yahweh allows and disallows? It's word. We have to go to the Torah. It's the only place we can go. Right? That's the only place we can go. Not to the city council. No prayer is needed in these cases. We must exercise the authority that heaven gives us and enforce it. Yahweh tells Moshe afterwards to anoint Yehoshua to rule Israel when Moshe was dead. Okay. But the most important thing is this. Yahshua says, I will give to you the authority, the keys. Right. You know what that means? Sure, trying to listen because you're going to miss it. I remember this. If you have the keys then why does the state need to approve your marriage arrangement and your children's education and your family's living arrangement? You have the keys! Have the I dare you to prove me wrong. I dare anyone listening in the radio audience to prove me wrong. Yeshua said, through Kifa, I'm going to give you the keys. And whatever that blessed Torah allows, you better allow. Whatever that blessed Torah disallows, you better disallow. That's what it means to have the keys to the kingdom. Not the keys to city hall. Not the keys to the state government. And when we go to the man's laws to find out if it's the law of the land, you have just disobeyed this mitzvah. This is a commandment from Yeshua. This is a commandment. Yeshua says, don't you dare give that keys to anybody else. I've given you the keys. Now are you getting this? Peter, a symbolic head of the Kehillah, you and your community of Israel will have the keys. And what do we do as babbling fools? We believe that you've got to obey the laws of the land. Amen. If heaven has loosed man's laws, I will obey man's laws. If heaven has bound man's wicked laws, I will not obey. Because my community has the keys to the kingdom. Amen. My community. Your community. All right. All right. Might you go to jail? Might you? Yes. 
my children. They will find out how much you love Yahweh. Then you'll find out if you're a Pinchas or a Torah fan. Might you? Yeah, it might. It might cost you your reputation too. And a lot of other things. But if you do what Pinchas did, he will make a covenant of shalom with you and your seed and your inheritance that will not pass away. If you do the right thing now, your children and your children's children will have a covenant of shalom with them. Even long after you're gone. Don't miss this. There is a loosing in heaven and there is a binding in heaven. And we cannot loose what heaven has bound. We cannot, we cannot or, not ordain gay pastors and bishops when heaven has bound it. If heaven has bound gay pastors and preachers, we cannot loose it. Isn't it interesting? The same ones who ordain gay bishops are the same ones who call plural marriage advocates perverts. This is sick, man. You're going to have to stand in the face of this gust, in the face of this tropical storm, with all the authority of heaven with the keys in your hand, because you're living in a sick, deadly, dastardly yes, culture. Yes. Amen. Amen. You Hefner is a wonderful entrepreneur. And if he has six ladies, ooh, what's your secret, you? And he marries them, it's illegal. Sick. This is a sick world. And believers are sick because they've been pressured and they've been taught by the spirit of this age. And when you stand for righteousness, when you stand for righteousness, they call you a pervert. Because they don't know the heart of Yahweh. They don't get their ruling at the door of the tabernacle. They get it by trading in the keys to the kingdom for the keys to city hall. I'm not telling anybody to break the law. I'm telling you, you need to check if what you're doing as an Israelite or what you want to do as an Israelite is bound in heaven or is loosed in heaven. And then make your decision. You follow me? Baruch Hashem. Yahweh. What happens next? Yahweh goes back to our Parsha and tells Moshe Rabbeinu to anoint Yehoshua to rule the people. When Moshe died, we see Yehoshua was anointed to ask counsel of Yahweh to rightly rule the people. Notice that because Torah had been completed by Moshe Rabbeinu, it did not give Israel the right to get their rulings and their counsel from men in men's courts. Meaning Yahweh made sure that when Moshe died, there was a man who could bring right ruling before Yahweh. It didn't release the people to get their rulings and their counsel from men and from men's courts. Today the procedure and patterns for right rulings remain the same. It's family business. Joshua is dead, but the family is alive. Moses is dead, but the family is alive. And fam as long as the family is alive and the door to the family is alive, we have the right to conduct family business the way it was conducted in the days of Joshua. Because Yeshua is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. And we close with this. Look at verse 21. And Yahoshua, who was appointed to oversee the family business, Verse 21, by Midbar 27, 21. If you're following in your in your in the word, he shall stand before Elazar the Kohen, who shall ask counsel 